Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing the concept of cellular infarction, especially infarctions in general on an overview scale. Definitely consider taking your time with this video because it will make up a bulk of your you know, baseline understanding of infarctions to come as it pertains to different disease pathologies. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe because your support means a lot to us. It allows us to keep this content free so that everyone can benefit from it. So that being said, let's discuss cellular infarction by first discussing the concept of cell injury. Our bodies, our cells in our bodies actually have de uh, developed a, a lot of mechanisms to be able to handle stress. They've adapted to certain levels of stress. They have a threshold of the amount of stress that they can handle. And this is all because of their ability to adapt via hyperplasia hypertrophy and metaplasia. Now what happens when you exceed the cell's ability to adapt? What happens when the cell's stress level or the amount of stress placed upon the cell far exceeds the cell's ability to adapt to that stress? Well, the cell will get injured and that's how cell injury occurs. Now there are many different ranges of injury and the injury itself or the damage to the cell is gonna occur in two stages. The first stage is gonna be the reversible stage which is characterized by cellular swelling because you are blocking the sodium potassium ATP aces, okay? And when you block this sodium potassium ATP ace, you are going to get high intracellular sodium, which is gonna cause water to go into the cell and the cell will swell up. If you do not remove the stress at this level, at the reversible stage, you will progress on to the irreversible stage, which is characterized by membrane damage, not just of the cell, but of the mitochondria too. And when this happens, the mitochondria will release cytochrome C from its inner mitochondrial membrane, and the lysosome will release lysosomal enzymes. And these enzymes and cytochrome C will then further the the cascade and at this point you of the cascade the irreversible damage will then go and progress to cellular death and the cell will die off whether through necrosis or apoptosis whatever is happening but the cell will have to die now that is the central dogma this right here is the central dogma of cellular injury now we're going to talk about infarctions because infarctions are very important they are very very high yield topics especially when it comes to different organ uh, organ systems not only the heart but also the kidney the liver the uh, gi system these infarctions are going to be uh, coming back up over and over again as we continue talking about these concepts of medicine so definitely take your time with this video. So when it comes to cellular infarctions, you need to realize that an infarction essentially is the obstruction of a blood supply to an organ or a region of the organ. Very straightforward. Now typically this is going to occur due to either a thrombus or emboli or an embolus which will cause local death of the tissue. Now a lot of people get confused between thrombus and embolus so we're going to uh, explain this right now. A thrombus is going to occur at a site in the blood vessel Okay, you are going to get a little bit of a plaque and then that plaque will eventually grow to occlude part or all of that blood vessel. This is called a thrombus. Okay, an emboli. An embolus is going to be when part of that thrombus actually breaks off, okay, comes off and then goes downstream into the smaller and smaller blood vessels as the blood vessels branch off, okay, into a small one and then gets lodged in that small blood vessel. It doesn't have to be small, but it gets lodged in a blood vessels away from its original site, okay? And this is called an embolus. Okay, so it really just depends on how the blood vessel gets occluded. For example, a pulmonary embolus actually usually uh, usually comes from a deep vein thrombus. Does that make sense? A pulmonary embolus comes from a deep vein thrombus. So DVTs will progress to a PE if you do not treat it. Right, that's a high risk. You will go to having a pulmonary embolus. What happens in the DVT is you have a thrombus in your deep veins of your leg, and that thrombus will break, uh, will break off. Part of that clot will break off, and then it will go to the lungs because of the way how the blood flows. Right from the vein goes to the heart, the right side of the heart, and then from the heart it's going to go to the lungs. And in the lungs it will get lodged, and it will cause a pulmonary embolus. Very high yield topic. Very high yield concept. Don't forget this. So now there are many, there are mainly two types of infarctions that we're going to be discussing today. 
they are the red infarctions and the pale infarctions. They have to do really with the color, with the way they look, okay? So that's a hint of what we're about to talk about. And the main differentiation is gonna be based off of the blood supply of the infarcted tissue. So with that being said, let's just dive right in and let's talk about the different types of infarction so that you can get a better understanding of what a red and a pale infarction is and what, it, what they look like in case you get a photo during your test. So a red infarction is also known as a hemorrhagic infarction and this is mainly going to occur in the venous, venous system. This is usually due to venous occlusion. Now the blood is going to uh, re-enter in a previously infarcted area. So the way I like to think about this is let's say you have some sort of organ, okay? This is the organ system in this box. And then you have some sort of artery going to the organ. And then you have some sort of the vein leaving the organ. If you have an occlusion in this region, you are going to get, uh, you're going to, you're going to block or you are going to cause uh, an infarction essentially because you are not going to get enough blood perfusion because you cannot drain from the organ. So it will get backed up. So less and less and less blood will get to the organ. Fresh blood that is oxygenated less of the fresh oxygenated blood will get to the organ and eventually the organ will start to die off, okay? And it will reach the entire organ if you do not treat this. So you have decreased blood perfusion essentially. All right, now this is a little bit different because in a red infarction, you are going to get blood entering into the previously infarcted area. And the reason why is because this tissue is going to be loosely organized. So now I'm going to show you how to remember a red infarction. Let's say you have the same organ system. Okay. And you have a few arteries going in and a few veins leaving. Even though you have some sort of infarction right here, or some sort of occlusion right here, thrombus or emboli, this portion gets infarcted, right? So that means the blood cannot enter into this region from this way. But you still have some sort of other uh, supply coming in from here. And this, this portion right here, from this artery, the blood will enter and go to the infarcted area. And when that happens, you are going to see the reddish color in the tissue even though this region is still infarcted. That's why you get a red infarction because you, you still have the presence of blood, but it is not in tissue that is healthy. Now, most commonly, this is gonna occur in tissues that have multiple blood supplies, just like I drew right here. What are those tissues? Well, those are going to be the lung, the liver, uh, the intestines, and the testes because you need to have collateral blood supply. The reason why you have collateral blood supply is because oftentimes these are very important uh, tissues, very important organs, and you can't uh, afford to lose part or you know a uh, portion of the organ with a blood clot. So, for example, the, without the lungs, you can't breathe. Without the liver, you can't live. Makes sense. So, one another example, a classic example that you could be tested on. Uh, is going to be testicular torsion. And it is going to be the concept of a testicular infarction that occurs due to torsion. You see, in a testicular torsion, you are going to have the thick testicular artery that is allowing blood to continue to enter into the, or into the testicle even though the testicular vein is going to collapse. So the occlusion is actually happened in the testicular vein. This is going to lead to ischemia because you don't have enough oxygenated blood. You don't have enough oxygenated blood entering into the testicle, okay? This means that because you have enough new oxygenated blood, that tissue will die off. But because you still have blood entering due to the, the collateral circulation and the loosely organized tissue, you will still see blood, okay? That is the main hallmark finding behind a red infarction in terms of a testicular torsion. Now this right here is a gross slide of a liver and you can see how it looks. You can tell clearly where the infarction is. Right here, what I just drew with my pen. 
This is clearly infarcted tissue, but it is also red. As you can see, it's a little bit darker than this area right here, which is just the normal healthy tissue, but it is still being perfused. You can tell that the tissue is a little bit looser, even though this is bad image quality. You can still tell that the tissue is loose, allowing for blood to get there. And you have multiple vessels essentially everywhere that lets you know that you have a lot of blood supply. Okay, so this is an example of a red infarction. When we're talking about pale infarctions, these are infarctions that occur due to no blood getting there or an anemic infarction. That anemic infarction is going to give a pale appearance to tissue. This occurs because you have continued inability of blood to re-enter into the infarcted area. It's essentially the complete opposite of a red infarction. Now, where will this happen? This occurs in solid organs with single and arterial blood supply, like the heart, the kidney, and the, and the spleen. When you are talking about a myocardial infarction, this is going to be a pale infarction because the heart has a single and arterial blood supply, and depending on what part of the heart we're discussing. Okay, so remember that these are going to be very, very dangerous infarctions, especially for these organs, the heart, the kidney, and the spleen. They're also highly associated with the atherosclerotic thrombi uh, cascade because those the atherosclerotic thrombi cannot be lysed and they continue to reform at the site of the obstruction. So even though you can remove part of the thrombi, you're still gonna be going through the clotting cascade and that will still lead to reformation of the thrombi and continue the obstruction in especially an organ with an arterial supply. And that's why the heart is so, so susceptible to this kind of damage. And this is what it looks like. This is a picture of a kidney. And as you can see, this tissue clearly paler than this tissue right here. This is what a pale infarction looks like. I hope this was helpful and I hope this was educational. If it was, don't forget to click the subscribe button to uh, join our channel and to show us your support. It means a lot to us. It allows us to keep this content free. And if you want to see more additional educational content free of charge, go to our website, www.madmedicine.org. 